Hello guys, figured I'll show you my little Black Friday DVD haul and then uh, there was a sale on comics, uh, back issues were 50 cents a piece. Figured this might be a quick video by my standards. Uh, decided to, uh, usually on Black Fridays, I'm one of those guys I'll hit stores in three or four towns around here and stuff because, you know, I'm really just looking for the DVDs and little odds and ends. Don't go for the big stuff, I can get in and out. And uh, this year I ended up getting there and you know they're having what they're calling Brown Thursday now, but uh, I was in town where there's a Walmart to begin with. I was eating, uh, th having Thanksgiving with uh, a couple of friends at a Crackle Barrel restaurant, and uh, you know swung on over to Walmart and got there about an hour and a half before the uh, Black Friday actually started. And man, they were like Walmart Nazis there. Man, they had uh, they had the uh, boxes uh, that were cut like into shelves with full of DVDs and they're all spread out around the groceries and the dairy and the produce and stuff and uh, man if you touched a DVD that was you know hanging out that cellophane they had wrapped around it man they were like right on you don't touch that you cannot touch that till six they were right there and there's one lady walking around and she had a great big huge pile of DVDs like this and she was taking them from people people were going through getting through the cellophane you know an hour and a half before the sale started and she was taking them from people it was hilarious so we ended up sitting there talking and ended up having like a little crowd of people start getting there and I'm pretty sure one guy that was beside me was high and uh, me and my buddy were the other guy had a halitosis so bad that he like breathed on me twice and I actually tasted it and my mouth got all foamy from like getting ready to throw up and then while I was talking to people there was actually a little spittle coming out of my mouth and I was like I am so sorry you know so after going through all that, I ended up getting some good DVDs. I ended up telling the whole sock monkey story, story of my phobia for sock monkeys and stuff. I think it actually kept people entertained. We had some good tit for tat, and overall, everybody had a pretty good attitude and stuff. So, and I'm rambling. Anyway, so at the Walmart, I just got a few things here. Well, first of all, let me get the two dollar stuff, the dollar ninety eight stuff. I figure it's time to uh, see what all this hubaloo is about. So I got some Harry Potter movies for two bucks a piece, you know, dollar ninety eight, ninety six, whatever they had. But I don't know if these are I don't know if these are in order. But here's uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and Goblet of Fire, um, Order of the Phoenix, The Half Blood Prince, and the ones I'm they actually do want to see these, the Deathly Hollows, Hallows. Part one and part two, and what kind of got me is that the, whole, the way these things were set up, you know, on you know when you're looking at them on the shelf, they all have a picture of Harry Potter until you get to that last one, and then there's nothing, so it doesn't look like it's part of the set. But one of the reasons I did decide to get this, besides everybody really being Harry Potter nuts and stuff, um, is because I heard that they're going to be discontinuing the movies eventually, like. Once what's out there is out, you know, they're going to put them in the vault and maybe get them out later. I don't know if that's true or not, but that is what, like, Disney and stuff does. So I don't see why they wouldn't do that either. All right, so some other stuff I got was uh, another, you know, here comes the boom. And I cannot believe I've got a Kevin James movie because I'm not a fan. But this this was a just a light, good movie with a great ending. So it was, it was good. Feel good movie. And then finally, The Princess Bride. Why I have not had this in my collection, I have no idea, but it was time, you know. All I like to say is, as you wish, you know. My name is Renvago Navcatecapo. You kid my father, prepare to die. And then uh, some season sets I got. I went ahead and got these because I wanted to have all of them and I'd hate to have a hole in my collection. Uh, the God Awful Season 6 of Supernatural were... Uh, Supernatural was originally supposed to be a five-year story that Eric Kripke wrote. You know, he had a beginning, middle, and end with his story where it would all come together with the two brothers in the car. Um, the 67 Chevy Impala. Mm, goodness, that's just one hell of a car. Anyway, so he was kind of like a creative consultant on this, but I think he did just enough to where they could have his name uh, still in the credits. And this was the first season where the story continued without Eric Kripke's really having a vision, a vision. It was more or less the world left over that, you know, he left, that he helped build and everything. And uh, just they were just getting on their feet on this. There's maybe two or three episodes that I can actually stand uh, out of season six. Then I also got season seven where it got a little bit better. And uh, for you Tick fans, 
the tick, you know, big blue tick and Arthur. Um, ben Edlin really got involved, I think, in this season. I actually think he wrote three or four seasons, or seasons, three or four episodes. Ben Edlin is, uh, he's on the staff. He's like one of the head writers or something. I can't remember what it is. Maybe creative consultant or something. But I think he did three or four, wrote three. He, he writes a script or two in every season. And then this one, he, uh, I think he wrote three or four of the scripts and he actually directed one of them, if I'm remembering right. So season seven, they were getting better. Season eight, they were back on their feet, and I think they're into season nine now. All right, got the fifth season of True Blood. There was only three of these, and I scored two of them. Very proud of myself, you know. Show has really gone on way too long, but you know. And then this is the one that I just the whole reason I went was to get this one. I was really getting worried because they had all of these like piled up in the back of you know the sets of DVDs. I was just like, you know, you didn't even see them, so I'm like, oh, but they didn't put them out. But I got the complete sixth season of uh, The Big Bang Theory. So I'm a fan of when it was just the four guys and Penny, the first two, two and a half seasons, and then. You know, all of a sudden when the thing started getting ratings and, uh, it, you know, it, was, it used to be on Mondays at 8.30. Now it's Thursdays at 8 o'clock in that prime time spot. And, and to me, they've kind of turned it into friends or trying to, but it's all relationships and stuff. And a lot of the geekery has gone out of the door, and pop, but it does pop its head up in there every now and then. And I cannot stand Amy Farrah Fowler. She's just a creepy... She's just creepy on the show, you know. I know she comes off as funny, but man, some of the stuff she does is just, she's just insane, okay? All right, and then, I think, is that it? Yeah, like I said, small haul. All right, so, uh, the comic book shop here in town had comic books back issues for 50 cents, and on a whim, I just popped up in there. I really just needed to get groceries, but I stopped by there and ended up getting 20 or 21 books. I might have miscounted on the guy. So, these came to like $10, all right? And... I'm always, you know, on the YouTube comic book community Facebook page, you know, somebody was really upset that when they bring Daredevil back, uh, they're ending the uh, Mark Wade Daredevil, I think, at issue 36, but it's coming back, but it's coming back as like a three ninety nine book, I think. You know, comics are getting really expensive. And, you know, these videos I've been making for years is my way of kind of showing that you don't have to pay full price. There's really no reason to pay full price for any book. And I've kind of gone against the grain a little bit. I got back on an online, subscri online subscription service where I get 15% off new books. So, you know, that sounds like it'd be, you know, great. Get a brand new book, bag and board, 15% off cover price. And I've ended up finding everything I've subscribed to in dollar boxes and 50 cent boxes. It's just not worth it for me. You know, I'm still getting the books two, three months after they're in, you know, get, you know, it's the same thing for me, but I actually I'm cheaper doing it my way. But anyway, I uh, just picked up some random issues of uh, Batman Incorporated. Here's number seven. Uh, Grant Morrison's on this, and this is the Batman Incorporated. It started after uh, the DC 52 got going. A uh, bunch of little mad kids with all the Batman masks on, you know, poles and stuff. All right, can't wait to read that. Uh, the Batman Incorporated special, which is, from what I can understand, some kind of swan song from Grant Morrison, like it's his last Batman issue, and uh, it has Bat-Cow in it. You see Bat-Cow over Batman's uh, shoulder there? So, it should be interesting. Got me another copy of this, Justice League number 24, first appearance of Crime Syndicate in the uh, DC 52 universe. I'm a huge Crime Syndicate fan since 1982, alright, I mean... Uh, first time I ever saw them that I was aware of, it was them, was um, uh, Justice League of America number 207, and it had a George Perez cover on it, and that just blew me away. And then I started digging through some of my stepdad or uncle's old ju my uncle's Justice League, and I found some reprints of the first appearance from the Silver Age there. I uh, went ahead and picked up this. They had a, quite a few issues of Jeff John's DC 52 run of Green Lantern. I think that his pre-52 stuff, I just did a video where I was talking about how it was the stuff, how it was just a great series. It's one of those classic runs, you know, uh, right up there with Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, Chris Claremont's uh, X-Men and Jeff Johns on Green Lantern. And then when it went DC-52, even though it was still Jeff Johns, I read like the first 15 issues of the book and one said it and they didn't go anywhere. They were still in space. Hal Jordan still didn't have, it just drove me nuts. Hal Jordan still didn't have a real ring. 
It didn't go anywhere. I mean, that would have been a year, almost a year and a half of reading, and it didn't go anywhere. It just blew my mind. But uh, he ended his run on issue 20 or 21, I think. But anyway, I got 19. Just to kind of lead up to it, see what happened before. We got some Hellboy books. Uh, here's the Storm Part 3. I have quite a few of these, but I just try not to buy doubles, okay? And then we got Hellboy in Hell number 4. Had a lot of BPRD too, but yet again, I don't know what I bought off the guy. I didn't, that was the last thing on my mind. I, I stopped there on a whim. Uh, Hellboy in Hell number 3. Hellboy in Hell number 2. Great Magnolia work. Uh, like I said, here is the Star Wars. This is where they take George Perez's original script for Star Wars before I got honed and stuff into the first trilogy, you know, New Hope and uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I mean, this is number two. Got that for 50 cents. And here's what I'm talking about. I've been excited for this. I wasn't going to read them and stuff, and I, I still haven't had it come to me through my online service, but I got Sandman Overture for 50 cents. Now, I got it for 15% off cover price, which was $5, 499 and I get it for 50 cents just by having some patience and waiting a month, you know. That's what I'm saying. I went against everything that I do. Uh, these were 50 cents a piece. Batman, I, got, I had Batman Superman number one, but I got Batman Superman number two. Number three, big dark side there. And number four, which I don't have bagged. And I think they're just now on number five. I got some more Justice League America. Number six, Trinity War. This is part two of six of the big Trinity War. Pandora on the cover there. All right. Uh, Justice League America number eight, Forever Evil tie-in. 50 cents. Uh, Justice League number 21, Black Adam, Shazam on the cover. How could I not get that? I'll, I'll probably end up going back and getting those. I got number 18 with a big cyborg cover there. That looks like an Ivan Rice cover. Hey, shoes say us. Yeah, it's an Ivan Rice cover. Uh, $3.99 book I got for 50 cents. So. And then I got, for 50 cents, I got some 3D covers. I got Bane. Uh, this would have been Batman 23.4. Uh, Graham Nolan actually came back and did this Bane story. And I have two of those. They were 50 cents a piece. And then I got uh, Batman Superman 3.1 with Doomsday. It's the 3D covers, and got two of those. So, there you go, 10 bucks for, good God, who knows? Should have done the math before this, man, but most of these books are three ninety nine. One's four ninety nine. So, 16 21 dollars. The rest are like about three, five, you yeah, know, I can go on and on. But, I got them, I'll do the math later. But um, anyway, that's it. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Hope everybody who made it out on Brown Thursday and carried on over into Black Friday. Hope you had the great hauls and got some good stuff. And um, that's it. Catch you later.